So it's here that I turn to reporting from the BBC and the New York Times who describe how Pegasus was discovered in 2016. Quote, Arab human rights defender Ahmed Mansour received a text message promising secrets about torture happening in prisons in the United Arab Emirates, along with a link, which is a form of social engineering. Mansour sent the link to Citizen Lab. An investigation ensued with the collaboration of Lookout that revealed that if Mansoor had followed the link, it would have jailbroken his phone on the spot and implanted the spyware into it. Citizen Lab linked the attack to a private Israeli spyware company known as NSO Group that sells Pegasus to governments for lawful interception, but uh, suspicions exist that it is applied for other purposes. And here's where things get even crazier. Quote, Regarding how widespread the issue was, Lookout explained in a blog post, We believe that this spyware has been in the wild for a significant amount of time based on some of the indicators within the code, and pointed out that the code shows significant signs of a kernel mapping table that has values all the way back to iOS 7. The New York Times and the Times... Uh, and uh, the Times of Israel, have both reported that it appears the United Arab Emirates was using this spyware as early as 2013. So what that means is that Pegasus existed for three years before anybody even knew about it. They had no fucking clue until 2016, and they, they think that it was in existence three years before that. So think about that. Think about the fact that we were essentially flying blind for three years prior to discovering this. And of course, we could make an entire podcast episode on what the Mossad and the CIA knew about it as far back as 2013 and probably before that as they were developing it. But I want to go ahead and just save that for another time. Um, I don't want to go down too many conspiratorial rabbit holes on that one, though I do think they're important to to consider. Um, the, The point, though, that I'm making today is that essentially no one knew that this level of spyware was uh, in existence or really even possible at the time. And one of the crazy things about Pegasus is the fact that the spyware can be placed on anyone's smartphone at any time simply by sending that person a link and having them click on it. And the link can be something real. Like, it can be something that actually is real, and it'll even work. So, like, for example, I have to catch a flight here in a little while, right? And I, for that flight, I have to check in on my phone. I get an email, then I check in um, to get my boarding pass, right? You can put the Pegasus spyware into that email. And so when the person clicks on that link, and it would still allow me to get my boarding pass and everything like that, as soon as I click on the link, it gives the, uh, the spyware access to my phone. Um, it, could, it could be something as simple as somebody sent, texting you a, a tweet, like a link to a tweet or something like that, or a video. Um, that's, that's all it takes. As soon as you click on that link, the spyware is now in your phone. Um, and And... All, all the person has to do is click on that link, and then all of a sudden, all of their privacy, from the, the, their own privacy to the privacy of any organizations or governments that they might work for, is out the window. It's gone at that point. Once it's on your phone, it's over. They're in there. And uh, it's incredibly difficult to detect. I mean, we're going to get into to that in a second here. But... Um, yeah, just in that moment, it's gone. Your privacy is gone just like that at the click of a button. And when I say that Pegasus can be used to spy on anyone, I mean anyone. So the following is from a Business Insider article from January of 2020. Quote, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos had his phone hacked for months and gigabytes of his private data stolen, according to forensic analysis cited in a UN report published on Wednesday. The primary suspect of the hacking is Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salma, who was exchanging WhatsApp messages with Bezos. The how of the hack, according to the report, is maybe the wildest detail. 
A 2019 forensic analysis of Bezos' iPhone assessed with medium to high confidence that his phone was infiltrated on May 1st, 2018 via an MP4 video file sent from a WhatsApp account utilized personally by Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. The analysis found that Bezos' phone was likely hacked using a notorious tool named Pegasus, created by the NSO Group, a secretive firm from Israel that bills itself as a leader in cyber warfare. Okay, guys, two, two things here. First of all, most importantly, what was the video file that he clicked on, right? So Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, sends a video on WhatsApp to Jeff Bezos. He clicks on it, and this is what they allege may have uh, put the Pegasus spyware on his phone. What what was the video? Like what is he what was he what was he sending him that he clicked on? This is the richest man in the world at the time, and uh, the the leader of a a massive uh, massively important country in terms of the the sort of global chessboard in a sense. Um, they they are a massive oil producer. It's a very wealthy country. So the head of that country is sending sending a video to the richest man on the planet. What, what was the video? I just, I have to know. Like, what, what was it? Was it, was it like a cat video? Was it like, was it a thirst trap? Like, was it an Instagram thirst trap? Was it like, could it have been chocolate rain or salad fingers? Like, were they going back and reminiscing about old YouTube videos? What was it? What was, what is the video that he sent him that made the richest man in the world fucking click on it? And next thing you know, boom, over with all his privacy gone out the window like that. What, what was the video? I have to know. At, at this point, I would probably let them hack my phone if they would just send me the video link that they had, he sent him. I have to know what it was. I, it's, it's incredible to me. So that's first, right? But secondly, and more seriously, uh, if, they, if they could get to Jeff Bezos, the world's richest man at the time of the hack, they can literally get to anyone. Th really think about that. People like Jeff Bezos go to great lengths to prevent things like this from happening, right? For example, Jeff Bezos sends $1.6 million on his own security every year. So that's, that's not only his physical safety, but it's also protecting him from cyber attacks like this. This is a guy that's so concerned with security. He had bulletproof windows installed in his office that can withstand rounds from military grade rifles. And so that's this is this is how serious this guy takes his security. Um he he makes sure that things like this do not happen and yet they did. 